RVing is a way of life that's bigger than ever. More and more Americans are hitting the open road. 46 million Americans are expected to climb aboard. Recreational vehicle sales are higher than normal. Nearly half of new sales are to first-time campers. RVs like these are more popular than ever, but they're also big and slow, which leaves the world wondering, when will someone build a motorcycle motorhome? This is a 1989 Honda GL 1500 Goldwing. And this is a 2006 Suzuki GSX-R 1000. And these are our motorcycle motorhomes. <laughs> Zach and I are tired of bikes being left out of the hashtag van life, hashtag RV living conversation. So we're setting about fixing that with these two incredible contraptions. Why choose between being able to do sick wheelies and being comfortable while you sleep when you could have both? Yeah, yeah. Exhibit A, Dave the Jixer, already established here on CTXP as one of the highest performing showroom superbikes of all time. Now outfitted with a stunt cage tow hitch and behind a tent trailer, which folds out into 75 square feet, queen size bed, standing room, and full bathroom facilities. Provided you don't need to wash your hands, but who does that anyway, right? Oh man, speak to yourself. Also, what happens to a motorcycle motor home? You got a motorcycle pulling a home, which I guess kind of works. It's a motor in a home, right? Ah, uh, well. The true way to do it, the correct way to do it, is over here. Let me introduce you to the Wing of Bago. <laughs> Perched atop this 34-year-old icon of luxury touring is a tiny home made out of wood. It's got windows. It is wired into the motorcycle's electrical system. So you've got USB power and interior and exterior lights and a skylight. It is only nine square feet on account of it being a tiny home, but it has a pop out that doubles it to 18 for sleeping. So we're looking at a perfectly engineered, well-balanced, all-in-one motorcycle motorhome ready for a cross-country trip. I mean, you're making memories with the whole family with this thing. <laughs> The whole family. You didn't have a passenger seat. We well, like you text and pictures in the road, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> or you like don't have a family, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anywho, <laughs> uh, whether it's Dave the trailer tow and queen or 1,100 pounds of aubergine Amish here, the goal <laughs> with this trip is to go from here in Los Angeles to the grandest of canyons in Arizona. And with the scenic route we have planned out, that means 600 miles of all American touring and camping to prove that these motorcycles should not be on the back of RVs, Ari, they should. E the RV. Correcto mundo. I mean, come on, like, look at these things. They're cool to look at. Yeah, they look better than they're probably gonna be to ride. Take your bets right now. Do you guys think it's gonna work? Do you think it's gonna work? Do you think it's gonna work? I really don't wanna fall over on this <laughs> thing. <laughs> we don't know if it's gonna work. As usual, safety was our top priority. We did a final systems check on our rigs found absolutely no issues whatsoever, and we're finally ready to hit the road. Let's go. No. Rock it. Keep rocking. Go. You got it. You got it. Go, 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 go. I got it. It's so heavy, dude. There's so much weight up high. <laughs> I had to remove the handy passenger handles. You ready for this adventure to commence? Oh, I stalled. You it. just stalled, Dave. I forgot that Dave is GP shift. I gotta go up for one. It's pure sport bike, man. <laughs> That's right. All right, we're leaving Carson, California, where our shop and office is. Ah. Oh my God, oh my God, those bumps are terrifying. I think the front wheel just came off the ground. <laughs> we're heading east. Grand Canyon is our final destination. Wherever we end up, there we shall sleep. Okay, here we go. 
across this minefield of bad pavement. Ah! <laughs> uh, look out. Uh, your trailer's got some bounce to it. Yeah. I also see what I believe is toilet paper flailing around like a ribbon behind your rig. Oh no, really? <laughs> is my toilet paper coming on dead? Oh yeah. Big bump, big bump. I'm, I'm pulling over. I gotta fix my toilet paper situation. I don't I don't want it to go out into onto Mother Earth. Put it in the toilet for now maybe? Yeah, the toilet has a nice little uh, storage area underneath it. Luckily. I thought of everything. <laughs> so far anyway. <laughs> now to merge onto a Los Angeles freeway. Oh, baptism by fire, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is this is where the average pace for those who haven't traveled in Southern California when it's open freeway is about 80 miles an hour, which is well beyond the speed that I think is really safe when you've got a barn on the back of your Goldwing. <laughs> well, actually, there's a lot of suspense involved for me because I don't actually know how fast we're going since Dave's speedometer doesn't work. Currently going 45. Wow, this is scary. Yes, this is plenty fast. Oh my God. Crosswind. <laughs> Traffic, holy <laughs> I'm sorry about the swearing, but I'm actually fearful for my life right now. Oh, this is very bouncy and scary. The wind is vicious <laughs> on this giant sail of a billboard I've got in the back here. <laughs> you know, your bike doesn't look that ridiculous from up here. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm, I'm putting my chin bar down so that people can see less of my face because I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I think you should be quite proud of what you've created, man. You may just change the world of motorcycle touring forever. The foundation of my motorcycle motorhome was a 35-year-old Goldwing with 114,000 miles. And by all accounts, it was in pretty good shape. That is, until I ruined it by adding a 250 pound house on the back, which brought the curb weight to more than 1,100 pounds. My GSXR, on the other hand, was the exact bike that once famously beat a Ducati Panigale V4 around a racetrack. I had added USB charging ports, an integrated heated gear controller, and bar risers for added comfort. It was essentially perfect. I've got fluid puking out of somewhere. Fluid? Yeah, what's that coming from? Oh, it fell off. Oh, no. What do you got? Well, the three inch bar risers that I affixed to Dave in the hopes of relieving some pressure on my wrists during this road trip, put the brake reservoir right up near the fairing and it, when it pushed on the fairing, it popped the hose off the little nipple on the bottom of the reservoir. Oh no, so it's literally just been pouring out of there? Yeah. And I don't think there's air in the line yet, but there's gonna be if I don't fix this pretty soon. A reservoir hose coming loose isn't the end of the world, but considering we were only 20 miles into our trip, it wasn't a great start. We're working out all the kinks. Like we said, we haven't ridden these vehicles before today, so <laughs> there's bound to be some bugs. Haven't found mine yet. Back on the road, it seemed like all was well with Project Moto Home. My bike was no longer leaking fluid, and Aerie seemed to be getting more comfortable at the helm of his plywood pleasure cruiser. There were the occasional teething problems, but for the most part, the sailing was smooth. As long as we didn't get stuck in any nasty crosswinds, everything would be fine. Oh my God, it's so freaking terrifying. I don't think I've ever ridden in a crosswind like this and certainly not on such a massive motorcycle. 
Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness. Oh. No, this is this is sketch, man. This better die down. It's quite a scene back here watching it dance around. Uh, you're doing great. We got a line of cars back, but you're okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, I've never seen a motorcycle act like that before. I'm doing everything I can to just freaking keep it on course. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, are you still going to be laughing when you see me get blown off into the desert? No, I'm not. I don't want you to get hurt or anything, but it is <laughs> an incredible scene. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. After fighting our way through the wind for the better part of an hour, we finally rolled into town. This area around Joshua Tree National Park has some of the finest camping in the world. But Ari and I agreed that there was only one place that made sense for a couple of ragged motorhome vagabonds such as ourselves. Look at all these spots, buddy. We're gonna be just fine. First night out on the road, and we are going to deploy our motorcycle motorhomes for the very first time in a parking lot. <laughs> because this is what uh, RVers do, and we are RVers now, so we have set up in the vast ambient light and many empty parking spaces of a Walmart, and I guess we'll just hope not to get shooed away in the middle of the night, right? Yeah, and you know, if it's 24 hour, then there's a bathroom right there, and you know, if we need uh, bulk cookies or cereal bars or beef jerky, we know where to go. Which, knowing us, we will. So this just pops right off of here. And then this guy folds off. This is my floor of my standing room. Look at this thing folding out, man. That's a lot of space. Heck yeah. Nothing but the best for Dave the Jixer. Yeah, you're gonna have plenty of space. Yeah. Would you like to step into this musty old sack of canvas? Yeah, I think I can space? smell it from here. Yeah. It's, it definitely reminds me of my Boy Scout days with the old the old canvas material. Oh, very nice. So you got this full-size bed here, as you can see. Uh, and then what's really nifty is I can access the storage underneath my trailer whilst I'm inside my cabin. So I've got my clothes, I've got a cooler. This is my sleeping bag and pillow, which I need to take out, actually. Hey, Zach, can you help me lift this half-ton machine under the center stand? <laughs> this is the first step. Oh, oh, chink in the armor of the uh, of the Winnebago needing yeah, well, it's, it's, you know. a friend to help you get it on the center stand, but you know. So friends are for. Okay, we gotta level the Winnebago, just like a proper RV. <laughs> Rise. <laughs> little on the left. This one's a little jacked up. Oh yeah, look at it, it's all bent. Oh no. Yeah. I heard it dragging when we got on the <laughs> 605. Yeah, that, that looks real stable, doesn't it? <laughs> Yikes. This is the magic of the Winnebago, folks. Nice and compact <laughs> while you're riding around. <laughs> and then you pull these levers and... There we there go. There we go. Ooh, voila. Oh, baby. Now, when I sleep, I like to have my arms above my head, so I made sure I had a full 80 inches in there <laughs> from stem to stern. The barn door opens to the right, you see. I already have my phone in there charging. We got power, nice wood interior. It is insulated. I've got my little granny's attic, the shelf up there, so I can keep my bottle of water. What's the funnel? What's the funnel about? Oh, that? That's, um... Yeah, that's my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a pro funnel. It's got a valve on the bottom and a lid, and I figure I can uh, feed the funnel out the hole is I Is that what the hole in the in floor the is? Yeah, it was kind of a desperate thing okay. that I did last minute. Fine construction, my friend. Thanks, yeah. And, I'm, I'm like, it feels like it's pretty sturdy. It's not, like, ultra sturdy. There's really only one way to find out.
Hopefully see you in the morning, dude. Another fine day of riding awaits. If I hear you screaming, I'll get out as quick as I can and try and help you. Likewise. <laughs> Nighty night. That smells really bad in here. It's quite cozy and calm inside this, uh, this massive tent that's honestly too big to even know what to do with as a motorcyclist, to be honest. I think uh, I'm looking forward to this night's sleep on this motorcycle camping trip. Good morning from the warm, cozy confines of the Winnebago. We've got a beautiful morning out there in the high desert of Yucca Valley. And uh, first night out on the road is success. It's pretty comfortable. Um, it was a little breezy, a little cold last night, but I was warm. It was calm in here. I got plenty of leg room. I got my motorcycle helmet. Kept my phone charged in the shelf right up here. Kept it powered up and uh, it was pretty good. So all things considered a great night of camping. While Aerie made coffee, I caught up on the latest MotoGP race in the comfort of my full-sized bed. Soon, the Wingabago received the ultimate camper compliment, interest from real live Europeans. Good right, morning. Where are you going? See? Uh, Grand Canyon. So yeah, we're going to Grand Canyon. See? Yep, we so it's a couple we all days saw. east. Yeah? Aries rig is very impressive. I think this is much less impressive when it's set up because it just looks like a pop-up tent with a motorcycle next to it. It's just another homeless guy who doesn't know what he's doing with his life. But when they see it hooked up and they realize that I have all the performance in the world on tap, plus a pavilion, I feel like then they would understand. I wish I could say that in Italian. Now they're leaving. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Our campers are packed. Woo. We're, uh, we're ready to go. The sun's shining. Um, Arizona or bust, yeah? Yeah, hopefully we get over the state line. I don't think we're <laughs> going to make it to the Grand Canyon today, but it doesn't matter because we can sleep wherever we want. We now know that Walmart parking lots are very safe and welcoming, and you meet lots of interesting people. <laughs> oh, look at that. Gotta love a Honda. Way we go. Uh-oh. My bike died. Does it smell like gas back there? That's what I'm trying to figure out. It smells like gas, yeah. Yeah, I know. It sounds like there's like no spark. Yeah, I don't know what to do. We added gas to the tank, and crossing our fingers that this is why the motorcycle won't start. I guess we just live at Walmart now. We have our houses with us. I think our families will understand. We weren't sure what was worse being stuck in that parking lot forever, or taking apart a 1989 Goldwing. We did our best to motivate and see what was going on beneath Vader's helmet. It's a disassembly by numbers. Literally. Disassembly by numbers in the ye old Goldwing owner's manual. We have access to some spark plugs. All right, give a little crank, see if we see some spark, or if I get shocked. It's always exciting. It's got spark. 
Running out of ideas, we plugged the Winnebago battery into the camera crew's van and kept looking for reasons that the bike wouldn't fire. We're trying to track down the potential problems because it seems as though it's not getting fuel because we saw that it was getting spark. There's just nobody home when you crank it. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Alrighty. We tested the fuel pump. We pulled the hose off of here and checked the output but the fuel is supposed to go through the diaphragm here. This acts as basically an automatic petcock, and we weren't getting gas when we pulled this hose off. Uh, so we basically bypassed it directly from the fuel filter, and now the motorcycle starts. Back in the big, cozy Winnebago saddle, head and east. The Winnebago drama put us on the road later than we expected, but you're never really behind schedule when your house has wheels. Just about to join up with classical Route 66. I mean, what better road trip RV and route than Route 66? Well, it depends how windy it is, but theoretically, what better road, I agree. Turning north, and the wind is going from approximately tailwind to fully perpendicular. So I'm carrying my <laughs> traditional 10 degrees of lean. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Uh. Dave, the trailer hauling Jixer, was unfazed. But once again, the USS Wingabago was struggling in rough seas. Conditions were bad, and when we finally saw shelter, we took it. Oh, oh, here's Jackson just broke off. Oh, wow. Half of it appears to be missing. I think I know where it is. That's too bad. That's the side I really need to like support the bike against the wind, too. Um, I guess I feel better now that I'm out of the wind briefly, but it doesn't look like it's going to relent. And uh, we've only gone about 60 miles out of the 200 we want to do, so um, yeah, might feel better after a little regroup. But right now it's seems like a really bad idea. You want to try riding it for a while, camera guy? Try this little helmet on, just take it for a little cruise. Hopefully this is the uh, crescendo of the bad idea, you know? We'll look back and we'll think, remember with the crosswind? Oh, that was bad. Eventually, the wind died down and we felt ready to brave Route 66 yet again. The Winnebago leaned into the wind and Dave's trailer shimmied down the road. We weren't going fast, but we've gone slower. Suiting up for another stint in the wind. Wow, look at these beautiful mountains. Really pretty, very dramatic. We were in beige desert today. Now we're in dusky mountains, it's beautiful. Dude, there's some burrows. There's like wild donkeys over there. Oh uh, yeah. Now, normally we're excited to get to Twisty Roads. We're coming up on some Twisty Roads, Ari Henning. How are you feeling? I'm trying to be as 
grateful and optimistic as possible, but I'm not going to lie. The road <laughs> being straight is much more to my liking on the uh, the Winnebago. It's just so big and cumbersome. But um, you should enjoy Dave's performance and athleticism. That trailer seems like it follows the wheel track pretty well. <laughs> Here we go. Go, Dave, go. Zach and Dave the Jixer disappearing into the distance as I drag my scissor jack through corners. Go, David, go. Dave the Trailer Queen versus the Twisty Road. <laughs> this is a super cool area. I would love to spend some time up here explore all these little ruins and vine shafts and all sorts of stuff. Listen to that K5 Jixxer sing, trailer or not. <laughs> it was only about seven miles of twists and turns through the pass. And frankly, that was enough of a challenge with our motorhome contraptions. But it was a nice change of pace before the end of the day. We made it, which um, seemed questionable on several occasions today. Those crosswinds were, I know I've said this many times before, but vicious and terrifying. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we persevered and actually made it to Kingman, Arizona to this wonderful KOA campsite where we're, we're doing the RV thing. It turned into a, a beautiful, still clear night. A little chilly. Yeah. But no wind, which you gotta say is quite nice. Which we learned in Wyoming is very important. <laughs> and today, frankly. Yeah. Um, we also experimented with the agility, or, yeah. or lack thereof, of these machines on that uh, twisty road through lovely Oatman, Arizona. I will say, slow as we were for motorcycles, we made pretty good time. And I don't, yeah. I don't see any Mini Winnies no, or no. Jayco's going that There's fast. There's no conventional that. RV taking those hairpins at those speeds. That was a lot of fun, actually. It was a beautiful mountain pass, a gorgeous road. And like, you know, Zach and I enjoyed riding motorcycles, even if they're encumbered with ridiculous loads. I mean, we did make it to the destination we planned on making it to tonight, which means tomorrow, a couple hundred-ish miles to get to the very Grand Canyon. And so far, more or less, so good. Yeah, if we make it there, it'll be motorcycle motorhome success. Or we'll freeze to death tonight. Good night, everybody. Bye. You're probably gonna be warmer in your bed tonight than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Morning brought more wind, but the sun warmed us up, as did packing up our mobile homes, some more labor intensive than others. Next stop, Grand Canyon, because what else could go wrong on this trip? Nothing, I assume. It is towing, which feels nice. For once, nothing did go wrong. We made good time all morning, and soon I had an idea. Big surprise. Jixer bro wants to flex and drag race against the old guy on the gold wing. This is true. I do. But not because I'm trying to shoot fish in a barrel. We've had a lot of time to talk on this trip so far. And we've been genuinely curious because both of these machines are heavily encumbered. And uh, we're not sure which one's faster. Well, I think I got something for you, Sonny boy. I got six cylinders, 1,500cc, 110 oh. foot-pounds of torque. I see. Your tune has changed. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But um, what do you think? Like the taxiway, like the yellow sign? That's plenty far enough. I don't want to go any faster than that. 
Well, I do believe that's a tailwind, so that should benefit the sail of a <laughs> Winnebago. So let's line them up, Sonny. I looked back and all I saw was billowing smoke as Dave <laughs> spun the tire. There you go. <laughs> Pump that front end. Whoa! Oh, Whoa. Dude. Wow. <laughs> did, you, did you hear the fork bottom? <laughs> yeah. Another notch in Dave's belt. Another victory. First, a Panigale V4S and now a 34-year-old Goldwing. Big Dave takes surprise. no prisoners. <laughs> also, we struggled with different things here. Dave struggled to, to put power down, what with the ball and chain and the two extra contact patches behind there, 500 extra pounds. Airy, no problem putting power down. I but, just struggle uh, with sheer mass and a lack of power to move it. And some wind resistance, probably. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, we kind, of, we kind of expected it to work out that way, but it was fun to find out for certain that Dave is still the king of the jungle, as we all knew. And now we got to quit dilly-dallying and screwing around and get ourselves to the Grand Canyon, because that is ultimately our destination, so. Indeed. Okay, now that your tire's warmed up, you shouldn't have any issues. <laughs> Onward to the canyon. Back at legal speeds, we boogied along Route 66 and enjoyed the sights. As we climbed toward the lip of the Grand Canyon, temperatures dropped, but our confidence stayed high. Things were going so well, in fact, that we decided not to take the boring, well-traveled route to our campsite. Instead, we opted for a dirt road shortcut. It would be the perfect test of overland capability for our moto homes. Alrighty. Oh, <laughs> snow on the road. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. All right. Well, <laughs> what the hell is this? It's not so much a dirt road as a snow covered road, which I was not expecting. Yeah, well, snow covered road on like a dirt bike with knobbies is one thing. A snow-covered road towing a trailer with hypersport tires. I just saw your trailer come off the ground. Yup. It is incredibly cold. Yup. Oh! oh, that's a big bump. Just felt the fork go straight to bottom. Oh my God. Yeah, careful. Good. Okay, okay. I don't want to crash. Oh. oh. All right. <sighs> I'm not cold anymore. <laughs> uh, that is a very large tree across the road. So it is. All right, well, progress has been halted. I mean, I'm willing to try to go around to the left, but that definitely seems like a sign to me that's like, hey, you guys probably shouldn't do this. Like a sign from above, like you're going to freeze to death out here. Like a sign from our family and loved ones who would like to see us again. So we try and turn around. Okay. I'm going to back up, I guess. I don't know how or what I'm going to do. I'm going to over. Over she goes. Oh, no. The large ship has capsized. I'm going to need some assistance. <laughs> I mean, thankfully, it didn't fall over very far. That's, like, that's pretty cool. It's got the crash bars. It's it got just the crash bars right on it. Gently tipped over. I've never tried to pick up a house and a motorcycle at the same time. Ready? Yeah. One, two. Okay. Three. Thank you, sir. Whew. And that was just a little 
three inch rut that caught me out. Yeah. Didn't damage my house. Didn't damage my bike or myself. <laughs> Do you want me to spot you on the U-turn? Uh, <laughs> so awkward, dude. Okay. Oh no. Fell all the way over that time. <laughs> One, two, two three. three. Oh, okay. Upon okay. the tires. One, two, two three. three. Oh. Oh. Careful. Okay. I got it, I got it. Okay. We learned that the Wingabago U turn is a two man job. In yet another victory for the Hypersport Touring Pavilion, I simply unhitched Dave and spun my motor home around. <sighs> A one-man job, and much more dignified. Well, it's uh, been a day of ups and downs, a uh, typical CTXP. Um, I would say we're, we're experiencing a, a down right now, in so much as the temperature is down, yeah. and uh, morale is down, and falling down from the sky is now snow. Oh, <laughs> wow. So, uh, you know. We're approaching the Grand Canyon. However, it's getting dark. Uh, there are no RV spots available because people, it's a popular destination. So we're just gonna look for a place to camp and hopefully make it to the Grand Canyon tomorrow. So today did not quite pan out as we had hoped. Temperatures were below freezing and dropping fast. We needed a fire for warmth and some food in our bellies if we had any hope of being comfortable overnight. Fire, check. Food, check. Comfortable? Well... He says he's gonna sleep in there like this now, but I smell leaking fuel. I think the I think the Winnebago tank is slowly I'm weeping. I'm so tired. I know you're tired. I'm in my underwear out here. And it's comfortable like this. Okay, should I go back to bed then? Oh, <laughs> uh, well the uh, the jack that I peeled off yesterday at Roy's on Route 66 would have come in handy tonight and would have prevented me from falling over. Um, that is a pretty rude way to be awoken, <laughs> but like we have said before, the uh, Winnebago is a proof of concept only, so we now know it needs more outriggers for stability. Thankfully, I am uninjured. I did spill tomorrow morning's coffee water, which is pretty upsetting. Third time it's tumbled down today, and it still seems to be intact, so we can at least say it's well built. All right, well, uh, back upright and ready to go to bed again, I guess, so, night. <laughs> That was a record last night for how cold we have camped in. Um, eight degrees, and I am grateful I was not in a tent. Although I will say my motorcycle motorhome did capsize last <laughs> night, which made it a little hard to sleep through the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we survived. We should really make it to the Grand Canyon today, seriously, because we're about 15 miles away. So if we don't, something's gone really sideways. And yeah. uh, I mean, I, I think the, the Hypersport Camping Pavilion proved its worth once again. Insulation, mm, non-existent. Two out of ten. But I was able to, you know, curl up in my sleeping bag in the fetal position and cry myself. You weren't worried about like, falling over, that's for sure. <laughs> I did not have concerns about falling over, and I had even had my little pop-up uh, bathroom in place in case nature called. So one last ride 
on the motorcycle motorhomes to the Grand Canyon. And with any luck, it's uh, early enough that we'll beat the crowds. This is brutal. We came all the way from Los Angeles to the great open west. To sit in traffic. To sit in traffic. The irony is uh, almost thick enough to slice up and spread some butter on it. Fun fact, the Grand Canyon sees approximately six million visitors per year. And apparently they all came to see it on the same day we did. How you doing? Two, please. To the Grand Canyon, seriously, this time. I feel like we're gonna see it any minute, man. We're like rising up and there's clearly a drop off over there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh. I'm getting glimpses. Wow. That is grand, my goodness. Wow. 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 <laughs> nice job, dude. Take a look for yourself, folks. There's a reason they call it the Grand Canyon. That <laughs> sucker is huge. That's really, that's really something. You know, it's funny. I feel like it's easy to take for granted just because we live in the U.S. and it's like, oh, it's this big hole in the ground. It really is special. I mean, it's incredible, yeah. I'm glad we finally made it. All right, well, I've had enough. <laughs> yeah, let's go home. Let's take this guy's camera and sell it for breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> We were worried when we left on this trip that our motorhomes were a bad idea. And after riding them 600 miles across the American Southwest, we knew for sure. Like real motorhomes, they are slow, heavy, and perhaps a little dangerous. On the plus side, you really can't put a price on the admiration of European tourists. So, do motorcycles make for good motor homes? No. No, they do not. But do bad motorcycles sometimes make for good adventures? Without a doubt. Hey, oh, Common Thread XPers, Zach and Ari here to talk to you about the sponsor for this episode, which is actually quite simple. It's the channel that you're watching right now. Rosilla produces these videos that hopefully entertain you, inspire you to get out and ride with funding that comes when you buy stuff from Revzilla. So whether it's a helmet or a jacket or tires for your bike, some of that money goes towards making these shows. So keep that in mind next time you need something for you or your motorcycle that if you buy from Revzilla.com, you help make these videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.